So we are going to do a differential equation battle, this time with systems. We have x prime equals x plus 5y and y prime equals x minus 3y versus x prime equals negative x minus y and y prime equals positive x minus y. So you can check the video in the description where I go over how to solve these. Pause the video and try it for yourself, then come back and we can go through the solutions together. So to start off, let's look at this first equation here. We know that we want to turn this system of differential equations into one equation where we're using vectors. We can represent the coefficients of these x's and y's as a matrix, 1, 5, 1, negative 3, and then we'll call the vector x, y, x, which means on the left side, when we differentiate x, y and get x prime, y prime, that means we have the derivative of our vector x. So once we have our equation in this form, we know we're going to guess that x is equal to some vector v times e to the rt, which means x prime is rv e to the rt, since v is a constant vector. So that gives us over here rv e to the rt equals 1, 5, 1, negative 3 times v e to the rt. We cancel out the e to the rt's on each side. And that gives us r times v equals 1, 5, 1, negative 3 times v. And this is the part where we find the eigenvalues and eigenvectors of our matrix here. In order to do that, we're going to set the determinant of this matrix minus r times the identity equal to 0. So when we do this determinant, we're going to have 1 minus r times negative 3 minus r. So these two multiplied together. And then we subtract these two multiplied together as 5. And that equals 0. When we expand this all out and put it together, we're going to get r squared plus 2r minus 8 equals 0. And if we factor this, we get r plus 4 times r minus 2 equals 0. Or you can just use the quadratic formula. We get our eigenvalues of r equals negative 4 and r equals positive 2. From here, we need to go and get our eigenvectors. So I've given us a bit more space, and what we want to do now is take this matrix here and plug in each value for r, and then solve our equation for equaling 0. So first of all, when we plug in r equals negative 4, we'll have 1 minus negative 4 is 5. 5, 1, negative 3 minus negative 4 is positive 1. And we want that to equal 0, so this is our little augmented matrix here. Notice that if we solve these, the top row and the bottom row, we can subtract those and cancel them out. And that'll leave us with just 0, 0, 0, 1, 1, 0. Or if we turn that back into equation form, x plus y equals 0. And therefore, x is negative y. So when we look at the eigenvector that goes with negative 4, it's going to be 1, negative 1. So each of these is going to be the negative of the other. Now we want to do the same thing, but we're going to plug in 2 instead of negative 4. So when we take a look at this matrix now, 1 minus 2 is negative 1 right here. Then 5, 1, negative 3 minus 2 is negative 5. Then we have 0, 0. Again, notice the top and bottom rows are going to cancel out. So this will give us negative 1, 5, 0, and then 0, 0, 0, since this top row is just negative 1 times the bottom row. Again, we put this back into equation form. Negative x plus 5y equals 0, or x equals 5y. So when we go over to our eigenvector here, if we just plug in y equals 1, that means x is going to be 5 times 1. So 5, 1 is our second eigenvector here. And this is actually all the information that we need to go back and solve for the actual number x. So let's do that now. The vector x is going to be equal to v times e to the rt. So our first v is 1, negative 1 times e to the r is negative 4 times t. And then the other solution is 5, 1 times e to the 2t. Give us a little more space here. Now what we want to notice right now 
is that what we have is two different solutions. So when we have a homogeneous equation with two solutions, we just add them and put constants by each one. So our final solution for this vector is c1 times this vector times e to the negative 4t plus c2 times this vector times e to the positive 2t. And the last thing we can do is split this up into its component parts. So if we want the number variable x here instead of the vector, that's going to be our top row. So we have c1 e to the negative 4t plus 5 here, c2 e to the 2t. And then y is going to be the same thing but the bottom row. So we have negative c1 e to the negative 4t plus just a 1 here times c2 e to the 2t. And that is our solution to the first equation. Now I've cleared the board and we're going to take a look at this second differential equation here. Again, we're going to go through the same process as before. So our vector x prime is negative 1, negative 1, 1, negative 1, x. Those are our coefficients in here. And then we'll guess that x equals v times e to the rt. So on the left side of the equation, when we differentiate, we'll get rv e to the rt. And that's going to equal negative 1, negative 1, 1, negative 1, v e to the rt. Cancel, cancel. So we get that our v equals negative 1, negative 1, 1, negative 1 times v. And this is the part where we find the eigenvalues and eigenvectors. So we take that determinant, negative 1 minus r, negative 1, 1, negative 1 minus r. Again, just subtracting r on the diagonal. Set that equal to 0. So we multiply this top left times the bottom right, just like that. And then we subtract these two multiplied together. So minus a minus 1 becomes a plus 1 equals 0. And then when we expand this out, we're going to get r squared plus 2r plus 2 equals 0. And if you use the quadratic formula to solve this, you'll find that the roots are negative 1 plus or minus i. So these are the eigenvalues. They're complex. And we're going to talk about what that means in a minute, but let's go and try to find the eigenvectors, see what we get. This is going to be pretty interesting, huh? So when we look at this matrix and we plug in the values that we get, first of all, if we plug in negative 1 plus i, that's going to be negative 1 minus negative 1 is 0, and then we have a minus i, because we're doing minus positive i, negative 1, 1, and then again negative i over here. And that's going to equal 0, 0. So when we do this, this is a little bit weird because we have complex numbers. but what we want to do again is try to cancel out the rows. So what I'm going to do to start is I'm going to multiply this bottom row by a factor of i. So if we do i times our second row here, that's going to give us negative i, negative 1, 0, and then 1 times i is i. Negative i times i is going to be a positive 1, and then 0. So what we have here is notice the top row is just a negative of the bottom row. So if we subtract these rows, what we're going to end up with is 0, 0, 0, and then i, 1, 0. Plug this in, we're going to get i times x plus y equals 0, or y equals negative i times x. So if we take this and we want to find our eigenvector for negative 1 plus i, well, if we set x equal to 1, y is going to equal negative i times 1, which is just negative i. So this is our first eigenvector. Now, for this second eigenvalue, I'm not going to go through the whole thing, but I've written out the solution right here. Notice all we've done is changed the negative i's to positive i's. When we go through the same process, we end up at the end that y equals positive i x. So our eigenvector is going to be 1 positive i. So I've cleared the board a little bit, and it's time to plug in our solutions for x using these eigenvalues and eigenvectors. So we get that x is equal to c1 times 1 negative i e to the negative 1 plus i t, and then plus c2, 1 positive i 
e to the negative 1 minus i times t. So this looks like a pretty weird solution, but let's take a step back and split it up into the specific variables x and y. When we do that, we get that x equals c1 e to the negative 1 plus i t plus c2 e to the negative 1 minus i t. And if we just look at this x by itself, this answer here looks very much like the solution to a homogeneous differential equation when we have a complex root. So you can actually check the video on that in the description where I go through how exactly this works out. But when we do this, we can use Euler's identity to take e to the it and turn it into the real functions of cosine and sine. Once we play around with the coefficients a little bit, we can actually set this up so that the entire solution is just a real solution. And it's going to look like this. x equals a e to the negative t cosine t plus b e to the negative t sine t. So this e to the negative t comes from the fact that both of these powers of e are e to the negative 1 t. And then the cosine and sine come from this e to the i t and e to the negative i t. Now when we want to solve for y, we can go through a similar process as long as we make sure we use the same numbers for a and b and get that this solution is negative b e to the negative t cosine t plus a e to the negative t sine t. So this is another very interesting result in that we started with a real differential equation and we got complex roots in our power and in the vector. But even though the vector was complex and the exponent was complex, by playing around with Euler's identity a little bit, we can bring it back to a real answer just like this.